Hey guys, it's Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Uh, today's video I thought I'd give you a quick walk around my shop and also show you what I'm up to as far as uh, coping with the pandemic. Uh, Australia's starting to reduce its uh, restrictions and my shop, we did try and open the other weekend and there was just too many people around. Um, a lot of people don't seem to be taking notice of the um, sort of social distancing. So what I've done is I've, I've basically partially opened or not even really opened. I'm screening people from coming in. So here's my shop anyway for those who haven't seen it. And all I've got out the front today is just some free stuff. I put a lot of stuff on this trolley for free. We clean out house lots and we get a lot of bulk and I don't like anything going to landfill so people find stuff there that they can use. Um, I also um, sell a bit of firewood that I just cut up and I'll feature that in, in previous videos. Any old timber that's, um, that's clean and not treated or anything is great firewood for the campers. So again, it doesn't get thrown out, make a few bucks out of it. So this is what I'm doing with my shop at the moment. I take e-waste as a lot of you know, so that's still being dropped off when people have it. And I'm open by appointment. Um, so basically it screens out about 80% of the people. And we can have hundreds through our shops on a weekend. And already today I've had lots look through the windows. Uh, and then it's only been probably four or five that have been bothered to either knock or ring, which suits me fine. It keeps the bulk of the people out of the shop. And the ones that come in are actually spending. So still making some dollars. So let's have a walk around the shop for those of you who haven't seen it. We do all sorts of things. Um, I call myself sort of an antiques or collectible shop but it's kind of all sorts of stuff it's bric-a-brac it's as you can see this glassware i've just locked the door now so that people don't come in at the moment i'm quite happy to for a lot of people to just walk elsewhere uh so we do a little bit of furniture we clean out house lots and we specialize in taking everything and it gives the shop a really good eclectic mix now i'll try and pan around slow enough so that you don't get motion sickness but this part of the shop here, we get a lot of glassware, a lot of china. Um, usually it's lower end of the market, but we do sometimes find some really good stuff. But look, a lot of the stuff in the shop is sort of five bucks, 10 bucks. Um, you know, we're not talking hundreds. If someone breaks a vase, it's usually not a drama. And um, it's a bit disorganized because I haven't really been open for two or three months. This shelf here is all discounted stock. It's all $2 a pick. And what I tend to do is uh, if things sit in the shop too long, they get discounted. So, for example, all this silver plate stuff I've got in the window at $5 each. If it's here for too long, it'll become $2 each. And if it's on the $2 shelf for too long, it, well, actually, this would probably go in the scrap metal bins because um, silver plated it's EPNS and nickel silver is a high percentage of copper but a lot of stuff ends up on the free trolley if I can't sell it off the two dollar shelf and that's just a good way for me to put stuff through the shop's always changing it ends up with someone that can use it and uh, you know nothing goes to landfill so as you can see around the walls I've got lots of prints and paintings most of them are pretty average but sometimes people just buy them for the frame uh, sometimes a nice few bits of furniture. I don't have a lot of room in my shop for furniture. And the shop's a bit cluttered at the moment because the footpath where we started, I normally have lots and lots of stuff out there. It takes me about half an hour to open and it really does attract a lot of business. Uh, but as I've explained at this stage, I don't want a lot of business. Nice cedar chiffonier there that dates to probably 1890s. So I get a few nicer bits of antique furniture. Mind you, they're not worth what they used to be but it does make my shop look nice and different and interesting. So lots of books, nice little Art Deco display uh, bookshelf there. Nice huge big table at the back that I've only really priced up. I, I think I put $300 on it. Now, back in the 1980s, it would have made a lot more than that. Nowadays, I probably won't sell it, but I'm kind of not worried. $300 represents the inconvenience for me to unpack it and try and get it out. So my pricing sort of depends on what the item is and how long I want it to sit here. Lots of books. Another little china cabinet there. I like to have lots of lamps on. It gives the shop a nice sort of atmosphere. And the building itself, as you can see, it's old lining boards. 
It's actually a very early old shop. In fact, it was a double shop. And this room we're in now actually was a bedroom for the residents at the back. So the shop was built in the 1890s, I believe, and the front room was probably all the shop was. I think it's been a jewelers and a radio repair shop and a oh, I think it was even the National Bank for a short time in the 70s or maybe the 60s. So it's been a lot of things over the years. It was a fruit and veg shop before I moved in. And I've cut through the wall here into the next room, which was a bedroom. And this is now my tech room. Now in the tech room, I take all sorts of stuff for e-waste, as a lot of you know, and I salvage what parts I can. And it's amazing what sells out of this room. Speakers. Look at this. This was just out of a kitchen kitchen appliance um, that was too far gone to bother selling. But little timer switch, 240 volts, runs for an hour. Um, someone will grab that for a project. You know, I put five bucks on it. So I get good value out of e-waste for parts. Uh, not to mention the stuff that actually goes for precious metal recovery. Uh, I also get lots of cords. And I'm not going to just cut all the plugs off and put them into the copper wire bin when they sell. I mean, lots of people look for audio cords. Um, the amount of power cords I sell is quite amazing. And I only ask a dollar for them. Two dollars on those ones. Oh, okay. They're a bit more. They're three dollars. But these ones up here are two, a dollar each. Especially the 240 volt power cords. Go through a lot of those. Uh, and charges, I always test the charges. I have a, uh, a portable appliance tester to test all things, make sure they're safe. And it's just a matter of keeping them in circulation. People are wrapped when they find something they need for a few bucks. They don't have to go and buy a brand new one retail. I've kept it out of landfill. Everyone's happy and I'm making a few bucks. So I quite enjoy all that. Um, and I'm going to be doing a lot more restoration projects on electrical stuff, particularly older vintage stuff. So you'll see some of those restoration projects in my upcoming videos. Um, old sewing machines. I get a lot of TVs and radios. And quite often they're perfectly fine. It's amazing people throw things out just because they want to upgrade to the latest model. And it's such wastage. I've got a whole heap of these Sony cube clock radios from a motel. There was probably about 20 of them. And they all worked fine. So there's only two left. Uh, TV monitors, phone systems. So this room, I quite enjoy this room. It's pretty well stocked for nothing. I really don't buy much of this stock. Occasionally when we do house lots, we pick up some old vintage phones. But most of the stuff comes in the e-waste pretty much. And I just love the whole recycling of it. So... That's this room. Uh, it changes all the time. I don't have much vintage stuff in here at the moment. I quite often do get old radios, like old Valve ones. I uh, sell a lot of DVDs. So this room's been sort of just a, a gradual development as I pick up stuff. Back out into the main room. I got a lot more china and glass in here. Uh, it doesn't sell like it used to. English china used to be really popular in the... 80s and 90s. Nowadays, there's still some people that collect it, but it really doesn't bring what it used to bring. There's some nice English trios in there. And, uh, you know, they've been there for quite a while. But that's fine. I mean, they look good in the cabinets. Most of my display cabinets aren't for sale, uh, even though lots of people badger me to, uh, to sell them. I usually just say that if I sold all my cabinets, I'd have to put the china on the floor, and that doesn't really work well. Pick up a bit of sterling silver from time to time. And uh, that's kind of nice. I don't sell a lot of that, but it looks good in a little cabinet there. Also lots of smalls, all sorts of things, pens and hat pins, silvery wool, badges. I like my shop being a real mix of curios, a bit of everything. I never know what I'm going to find. Love getting into old houses that still have stuff in the cupboards. You know, old medicine stuff. Uh, tobacco tins are always popular. So um, it's just, just every day is a treasure hunt and it's enormous fun. So we'll scan back around here. This video will probably go for a while, so bear with me. Hope you find it interesting. And the stock changes all the time in my shop. Um, I do get a bit of jewellery, usually nothing fantastic, but it looks good in the cabinet here and I do sell the odd piece. 
uh, and bottles, old lamps. And I often get customers laugh at this sign. Prices subject to change according to customer's attitude. And I usually say that the prices can go up or down depending on how you treat me. So I like to have a bit of fun with people. They always haggle as well, which is good. Sometimes I'm quite happy to haggle on old stock. I usually have some mystery items for people to guess. And there's a puzzle there that the kids like to play with. Uh, more books. Here's a great um, college student's bookcase. Some bricks and planks of wood. But hey, whatever works. And again, it gives the shop a kind of rustic look. All right, so we'll venture into the other half of the shop. And this side's kind of the bloke's room where we have a lot of old tools. I've just reorganized this room recently and I've got the heater on this morning. It's been freezing cold today. Nice frosty start. A lot of car stuff and there's people looking through the windows so we might scan out to the kitchen room next. So down this little hallway we have a bit of bar stuff. Old cans of um, beer and whiskey jugs and I haven't got a lot of that sort of stuff at the moment but it comes and goes pretty quickly uh, I do have plans of opening up through behind that curtain there there's actually an old toilet that's not used and I'm thinking of opening right back to a further hallway back in the house and then joining up with the tech room on the other side so that'll be kind of cool it'll take a bit to do but um, I think my customers will love it they like the whole Aladdin's cave feel right so this is the kitchen room where we have lots of canisters. Uh, I do put a few prints and things up on the wall, um, but you can see there's lots of kitchen type stuff, uh, bakeware, electrical appliances. And again, I get a lot of kitchen appliances in the e-waste and a lot of it is near new. Just amazes me how many people were basically gonna throw out perfectly good items. So now that I can test them as well, I can sell them safely and sell them cheap. I've got $35 on that Phillips juicer. I think that retailed at a few hundred dollars and it looks brand new. So as you can see, all sorts of stuff, a mix of ages, um, teapots, thermoses. And this little wall display I made in a recent video, and I'll link it now so that you can have a look how I made it. Just out of an old picture frame and some timber from a bed base. Great little display for antique bottles. I haven't actually priced that because it kind of looks good there, but um, all the bottles are priced. And then we have some more modern appliances, a dehydrator, an old Kenwood Mixmaster, a large urn. So we cater for collectors, we cater for antique buyers, and I also cater for people that, you know, perhaps if they're doing it tough and they need a new kettle, and uh, save a dollar where they can, can't afford to go out and buy new stuff, and I'll sell them a, a tested electric kettle for, say, $5. So it's nice to have a shop that sort of targets all angles of society. You've got your, your wealthy people that like to collect, and they'll come in and buy you know, an antique such and such, and it might be one to complete their collection, or an Arnott's Tin collector, or someone that just collects for the sake of it. But I've also got... And as I said, people, things for people that are perhaps doing it a bit tough and they can pretty well stock their kitchen and, and make a house livable with some bits and pieces for next to nothing. So I enjoy that. And it's all about keeping it out of landfill and just keeping that circular economy going. I make use of ladders. I sell a lot of ladders. These ones actually aren't for sale up the top here and there's one in the bloke's room as well. But they make a good sort of second tier display and you'll also notice these lights. I've done a video on those ones before, just making cool sort of kitchen alia lights out of old pots. So I'll link that video on how to do that. So as we move out of the kitchen room, you'll see I've actually ended up with three distinct bays there, all lit by the old pot lights. And... Um, yeah, it's, it's very popular. I do sell a lot of stuff out of this kitchen room. So we'll wander back through to the shed room. Hopefully no one's looking through the window now. Sometimes I feel like I'm a exhibit in a zoo when I'm doing things in here and the door's locked. You just get people glaring through the window. So back into the bloke's room. 
this area a bit empty at the moment I've got to get some more stock in here but there's a bit of sporting stuff some fishing gear um, dogs bowls lawn bowls down there you can see that we do get a bit of everything uh, bicycle parts and when I get an old bike in the um, you know in a shed cleanup that's not worth selling I'll pretty much just take the bits off it and if the tires are still up well I sell the tubes only a couple of bucks each but you know it's much better than throwing the bike in the scrap metal where you get you know 10 cents a, a kilo um, sporting books some lighting fittings got a lot of lighting fittings um, I did buy leftover stock from a new shop once and I've still got lots of those to go through uh, maps I sell heaps of maps all different areas of Australia I got a big deal of those at one stage and I've been selling them for a couple of years and it's amazing how that adds up and a bit of electrical here um, more sort of industrial type electrical some old jerry cans and if I just scan back around here this shelf has jars and jars of just nuts and bolts and screws and springs and cupboard latches all sorts of stuff that I find in people's sheds plumbing fittings <clears throat> and uh, there's pretty well nothing that you could think of that I don't have in my shop at some stage and people come in sometimes and say do you ever get and I stop them before they go any further and I say yes I just about have everything at any given time I just never know when and I usually say it's just potluck lots of people want me to ring them when I get something in that they're after and uh, you know I just I just can't I don't have time it's potluck when they call in I actually tried to explain to a guy the other day that if I took the first person's number that wanted to collect say old oil bottles and I rang him every time I got one then all the rest of you guys would never get a chance you'd miss out so I think the fairest way is to just don't ring anyone and uh, whoever happens to be here when I put stock in and quite often things sell the first weekend then good luck to them it means they'll always come back because you know you just never know what's going to be in stock and you know that I'm not ringing someone with the special items and uh, you miss out so that's how I like to run my shop and as you can see I like all these bold pigeonholes um, can you believe that this really nice old one in the corner here uh, was actually on a guy's bonfire to be burnt and it came out of an old workshop I rescued it um, I took it down to the car wash and pressure washed it because it was filthy dirty and I've had so many people wanting to buy that over the years but it's not for sale and it just looks so great it's good for you know I just shove tools in here all the time and it constantly needs topping up um, you know all sorts of things these are just tin snips there's lots of woodwork chisels people can see that looking through the window um, car parts lots of old spanners and look I've said before I think this bloke's room I probably turn over the most stock out of this room than any other room all the other rooms put together car manuals go well um, I like bigger things I haven't got any engines in here at the moment I like to get a few old engines but how's this this is has to be almost the the biggest pipe thread you've seen it takes about two men to lift it uh, an old gas burner People pick up stuff here for their own projects. There's a nice early, uh, well, not that old, but uh, probably 70s, I suppose, 60s or 70s. It's a torque wrench, really good Australian-made one. Uh, they're pretty popular. I could sell some of that stuff on eBay, but I'd rather have my shop interesting with all that sort of stuff. And obviously, it doesn't cost me fees if I sell it through the shop. So, yeah, look, I, I this is my background, I guess. I was a mechanic for a long time. I grew up on a farm, so I have a bit of a... A bit of a soft spot for mechanical things and getting into sheds uh, and I do love a good shed clean out some of the sheds we we do you know it's a deceased estate and the family have no idea what's in the boxes and and we'll do a quote based on what we see and then it's just enormous fun going through all the boxes and you know sometimes you find a bit of wildlife you know, get rats and possums and old tools and Sometimes it's just a heap of metal off cuts that are all rusted and not much valuable value and other times you find really early tools. I once found a furfy spanner in a box of tools that I cleaned up and 
threw that on eBay and it made about $800. So you can find some real treasures sometimes. It's all part of the fun. Get a bit of military stuff, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, lots of old old tools, like that's a, a rabbit trap setter. It's an English made one, very collectible. Uh, a bit more army stuff that featured in a recent picking video I did, as did the old Bedford truck dashboard. So it just adds to a lot of interest, and I do sell lots from people looking through the window. I kind of make sure all the price tags are readable from outside. And uh, the amount of times people ring me up and say, are you nearby? I'd like to buy this, whatever it is in the window. And that's why the lockdown hasn't bothered me so much. We are selling a lot from phone calls. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy to keep the bulk of the traffic out of my shop at the moment. You know, just because a lot of them are tire kickers, a lot of them just come through. And I don't have a problem with people coming through and enjoying the stock and the displays. But... Um, you know, in this day and age where we need to self-isolate a little bit, I'm much happier just having a small number of people that are going to spend and it's less stressful for me and for everyone else. I just went over to the bakery before to buy a newspaper and there would have been 20 people in there and uh, no one's taking notice of the crosses on the floor, which is a bit of a worry. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the look around my shop. Uh, I do have a side lane on that side of the shop outside between the shop and the next one which I keep a lot of um, sort of shed things down there you know old uh, parts engine little engines lawnmower stuff um, jars of more jars of hardware and on the other side between my shop and Christine's which is on the next the next shop along there's a nice lane where I keep a lot of garden stuff I haven't opened both those I'll do another walk around when my shop's fully open there's a lot of old bottles as some of you might know, I've done videos on bottles. It's been a hobby of mine for most of my life. So I always have a good stock of bottles in my shop. So I hope you've enjoyed the walk around. Pretty well the saying of one person's trash is another tre another's treasure applies here. I make a good living do this, doing this. I have a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoy the treasure hunting of it. And I enjoy the processing and keeping as much as I can out of landfill. So, all right, we'll do another walk around in a few months or um, perhaps when I'm fully open again, if that happens soon. And uh, I'll leave you with my haggling policy just to finish with, which kind of represents my shop pretty well, I think. You can freeze the screen to read that if you like. So, um, thanks for watching. Look out for my next video. Uh, it could be anything from another test of my worm farm to a repurposing project or a restoration who knows? I hope you're enjoying my channel. See you next time. Bye.